Okay, hi everybody. Um, so we have 62 people here, which is awesome. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. And um, so my name is Kaylee. I'm one of the booksellers for Belmont Books. Um, I will be hosting this event. And if you have any messages that you wanna send to me, you can do that in the chat. Um, a few housekeeping items before we get started. Um, like I said, please keep your camera and your audio off during the presentation. That's to make sure that the audio doesn't cut in over the top of Victoria J. Coe when she's speaking or the special guest when he is on screen. Um, and next thing is that Victoria will be answering your questions at the end of the presentation. And you can send those to me in the comments at any point during the presentation. And I will collect them and share them with her at the end when we're doing the Q&A. Um, next, we will be recording tonight's event. And we hope to make that available somewhere online in the future. We're still figuring out exactly what the right place is for us to do that um, as Belmont Books. Um, if you want to keep in touch with Belmont Books, you should go to belmontbooks.com and you can subscribe to our newsletter. That's where you'll find out about all of our upcoming events, um, whatever specials we have going on books, um, our recommendations from booksellers, um, a few of our upcoming events that we have for kids. Tomorrow night at 7 p.m. we have a bedtime story time with Josh Funk and that's going to be on our Instagram live. Then on Saturday at 11 a.m. We have author and artist of Llama Unleashes the Alpalcalypse. That's Jonathan Stutzman and Heather Fox. And they're going to be presenting virtual story time on Instagram Live. So that Instagram is instagram.com slash Belmont Books, where you can see those events. And for our complete calendar, you can go to belmontbooks.com slash events. One last announcement. Uh, Victoria J. Coe has very generously offered to send a special Fenway and Hattie in the Wild postcard that she's had made up to anybody who orders any of the Fenway and Hattie books through belmontbooks.com. And that is good through Thursday. So if you haven't yet bought the book or if you have already bought the book through Belmont Books, um, you can get that. Just be sure that you place your order before Thursday. So um, let's go ahead and get right to it. I know you're all really excited. Um, let's get to the main event. So. Victoria J. Coe is the author of Fenway and Hattie, the 2017 Global Read Aloud for Young Readers and popular One School, One Book title. She's also the author of three additional Fenway and Hattie books, the latest of which we are here to celebrate in paperback. Victoria is excited to be here with us for her very first virtual event. So let's welcome Victoria. Victoria, are you there? Oh, hello. <laughs> first, I was muted, but now I'm here. This is my very first event, <laughs> so I need to get used to it. Hey, everybody. I'm so excited that you are here, and I am also so grateful to Belmont Books, one of the wonderful independent bookstores here in the Boston area for hosting tonight. Um, we are here, as Kaylee said, to celebrate Fenway and Hattie in the Wild, which is the newest book in the Fenway and Hattie series. This book came out one year ago in hardcover. And instead of doing a little book talk, I thought that we could show you the book trailer. So why don't we take a look at that now? He's chased nasty squirrels, defeated evil bunnies, and conquered the Cone of Doom. But can Fenway handle his next adventure in the wild? Great news! My family is going on a picnic and my friends Goldie and Patches are coming too. Sup, ladies? This is no picnic, Fenway. We're going to live here. Not forever, just for three days. We do it every year. It's tradition. You mean we're going to sleep out in the woods with wild, I mean, with other animals? Wait till you meet the other dogs, Fenway. You'll be a big hit. Let's not forget what happened last year. 
Did something bad happen? Don't worry. Just some troublemakers. Everything will be fine this time. It will? Find out what happens in Fenway and Hattie in the Wild by Victoria J. Co. Hattie, did you hear that? Hattie? Hattie? Oh my gosh, wasn't that cute? Um, now I want to show you all a slide from where we were one year ago. Last year, when this book came out in hardcover, my very good friend Ellie Swartz and I brought a live version of our YouTube series, Books in the Kitchen, to one of our other local bookstores. And here we are making s'mores bars, get it, from the camping trip. And we are being helped by Liv and Charlotte Van Leggi, who were the talent in that adorable video, and Henry Reynolds, Peter H. Reynolds' son, who, as it turns out, was an expert at smashing the graham crackers. And the next slide I want to show you is Ellie and me dancing, because, you know, that's what we do in our web series. So we had to dance, had to dance at the book launch. And so the next thing I want to show you is the delicious s'mores bars that we made. Don't they look amazing? They really, really, really were good. Now, the last thing I want to show you is this event was so special. It was so amazing that we were written up in Publishers Weekly. So, I want to tell you guys that unfortunately, we are not going to be doing the same thing tonight. But we are going to do something that might even top that. In fact, I think it will top it. You know why? Because we have planned for you something that I, I don't think any other author has done. And that is to celebrate a book with the cover model for her books. Yes, it's true. We have waiting to join us tonight a superstar dog, a celebrity, a very, very talented show business canine ready to meet us. Are you all ready to meet him? Are we ready to bring him on? Are you ready, cover model dog? Oh my gosh, there he is. Can you all see him? Hello, hello. It looks exactly like Fenway. But is it Fenway? <laughs> I'd like you all to meet Deke. He is a very famous show business dog who played the part of Fenway on our books. <laughs> Isn't he the cutest? And his owner, Mary, who is there and will answer some questions. Mary, can you hear me? Hi. Mary, Hi. you guys are so fantastic. Look at him. He's Is he the cutest? Boy. He's, He's so excited. good. He's very excited. Mary, Mary, why don't you start off by telling us a little bit about Deke. How old is he? How long have you had him? And what are some of his uh, special things he likes to do? Well, besides so, eat treats? <laughs> besides eat treats, right. That's what he's doing. <laughs> Well, Deke is 10 years old. His birthday is February 17th, and he was born in Kentucky. Um, I picked him up in May of 2010, and he's been living with me ever since. Um, we, he loves to do agility, where the dog goes through the obstacle course. He loves treats. He loves, <laughs> he loves to play outside, and... Um, he loves to play with the other dogs in the house. I have two other dogs and he's just a fun guy. He's very smart and he's very cute. I'm a little partial, but he's very cute. And I think we all agree he's very, very cute. <laughs> and, he, and he loves to work. We've been um, doing, doing jobs and doing modeling for you. Actually, the book cover was his first job. I wanna ask you about that, Mary. Yeah. So I wanna just tell you and to tell everybody, that when I visit readers in schools, I 
always get asked, who is the dog on the cover of the books? A lot of people think that it's my own dog. A lot of people think that um, it's, it's the real Fenway. <laughs> of course, Fenway is a character that I made up. People, some people think it's actually not a photograph, but it's computer generated. Um, but no one ever guesses that it is a real dog who is a professional model. So Mary, if you don't mind, I'd really love for you to tell the story of how <laughs> Deke <laughs> became Fenway. Well, sure. One day I was on Facebook of all places and Somebody posted on a Jack Russell Terrier Club site. They were looking for a Jack Russell for a photo shoot. So I sent his pictures in. Um, there were about eight dogs that got picked and submitted to the publisher. And Deke got picked. Um, we went down into, I live just outside of Chicago. So we went down into the city and spent the day with a photographer and took lots of pictures. Um, had a really great time. Deke loves people, so um, he got to see all kinds of people, which made him very excited. And um, that was that was our first job. And how long did how long did the photo shoot take? It was about eight hours. It was a long day. It was a long, maybe five or eight hours. It was a very long day. Uh, wow. Yeah, you know, and he got to run around the studio because he doesn't <laughs> want to be in his crate. He runs runs around the studio. Um, meeting people and um, there you go and he has a lot of energy and I think he actually fell asleep on the way home that day <laughs> oh my goodness I bet he did well he's a working dog how much did you know about the book or did you know the photo shoot was for a book no we didn't at all um, I think I had seen on somebody's paper at the at the shoot that it was I saw your name Victoria Co. so I came home and I googled it I'm like oh look at this and it's so exciting, actually, to get to meet you. This is the first time. We've I know. We've never met. Right. That's, that's the other thing that everybody asks me is if I made the covers of the books, which, of course, I think everyone can kind of tell just from having heard this part of your story that, that I had nothing to do with it <laughs> because the photo shoot took place in Chicago and I live in Boston. And not only that, but I didn't even know that this was going on until afterwards when my editor... Um, Susan Kohan told me about it and she said um, she told me that there was going to be um, a photo shoot happening. She told me it was the same animal photographer who took the um, world according to Humphrey um, pictures of that adorable little hamster so we knew we were in good hands um, but it wasn't until um, this picture, I have so many books in front of me, this picture was selected for the cover of the first book that I just saw the picture of him, not the yellow cover. And um, that was my very first time that I saw Deke. That was back in 2015. So it was right after the photo shoot. And you know what I said? Honestly, I laid eyes on him and I just said, he's magnificent. Oh, you. Don't you all agree? Isn't he magnificent? He's such a good boy. He really is incredible. So all of those pictures were taken on the same day. And so each time there's been a different Fenway and Hattie book, um, the, um, my pub, the art department at, at Penguin at Putnam, they just go back and they look at those photos that were already taken and then decide which one will go on the book. Isn't that interesting? And it's neat too, because you can see him now a little bit. He's got gray around his eyebrows. He's getting older. He's 10 years old now. And that was taken when he was five. So he's getting older, but you know, I have pictures of him from when he was, you know, young back then. He's still young, but, um, it's, so it's kind of neat. Yeah. Yeah. He's so cute. I can't take my eyes off of him. Oh so after he did the covers for Fenway and Hattie, um, what else has he been doing in terms well, of his show business uh, jobs? We've had, we've done a couple commercials um, in Illinois. There's one for Illinois Lottery and there's one for a healthcare uh, company in Illinois that he's in, he's digging a hole, it's very cute. Um, and, he's, and he's sitting in the hole, he stole somebody's uh, remote control and he's, he's burying it in the, in the hole. Um, he's done a couple commercials for a company out on the West Coast, uh, Cox Communications. Um, we've done some photo shoots for Crate and Barrel. Um, that was, it was an email campaign, so he's wrapped up in a blanket, he's very cute. He was so good for that one. 
he, and um, he, he's just done, you know, uh, there was a job for Pine Mountain Fireplace Logs. He did that one. So he's on the packaging for that. So he's all over the place. Uh, some, some friends of mine will email me and say, is Deke in this commercial? I'm like, no, that's not Deke. <laughs> <laughs> Recently, he spent two days in St. Louis with his agent um, doing a, a photo shoot, a commercial shoot for Purina. And I think that's on Facebook somewhere. Yeah. Oh, how yeah. fabulous. Yeah. So. Well, he really is very talented. I mean, obviously, he, he's, I mean, who, who could get a Jack Russell to sit like that? <laughs> no, he's wild and crazy, wild and crazy. Um, but when he gets on set, he just focuses in. And he, he just, it's just, he just turns it on and he knows he has to work. So um, it's kind of fun for other friends of mine say, is that the same dog? <laughs> yeah. Because they see him in real life go crazy. But, uh, and by crazy, I just mean he's a lot, he has a lot of energy. He's, Jack yeah, yeah. folks have a lot of energy. Right. They're very exuberant. They love life. Um, yeah. Well, that leads into my question. I was just about to ask you, how is he like the character Fenway? And you just mentioned <laughs> several of the things. Yes, very exuberant, loves life. He loves to play. He loves people. I know Fenway adores Hattie and Deke is the same way. He's just my buddy. You know, he's always there. We're always tagging along together. Um, and he also loves treats. <laughs> he loves treats. That's what's keeping him here right now. Look at him. Look um, at those eyes. But so uh, how is he? How is he not like Fenway? You no, know, he's not um, a big. He's not a dog that really goes after squirrels. He doesn't. <gasps> I know it's hilarious. What? Yes, I mean if he sees them in the yard, he'll chase them. But he doesn't stalk them and look out the window and try to you know try to find them and keep guard. But um, he also, I mean, I know Fenway loves people, but Deke loves everybody. Like if yeah. I'm out, excuse me, if I'm outside. And my neighbor comes out he's by the neighbor so <laughs> he just he just loves people and uh i think fenway's a big cuddler he, deke's yeah. not, deke is not a great cuddler <laughs> yeah deke, deke well, would fenway's be... also very suspicious of the mailman oh yes the, yes Chuck. <laughs> that's that's i think every dog would be suspicious of the mailman and visitors very curious um very inquisitive and you know very very protective I would say yeah you know wants, yeah. To make sure, wants to make sure everything's okay how do you think that Deke would handle a camping trip oh I think there'd be I think he would not sleep I think nobody would sleep <laughs> he'd be he'd be barking at all the noises and and um sniffing he'd be digging a lot and sniffing all the critters and that then he might be interested in the critters for sure <laughs> I'm sure and if there was if there was a water if there was a lake he'd be in the lake he loves to jump in the water he he's, does he's a very bad swimmer but he loves to jump in the water <laughs> well i'm not going to give any spoilers but there is some water in this book okay <laughs> you, you all have to get the book and read it and find oh, out. i know yeah. has yeah. have you ever been somewhere with deke and uh he got recognized by uh, someone who has read the books you know i don't think so i don't, don't think, think so been, friends friends of mine have yeah you know friends yeah, of mine it. Yeah, friends of mine actually with kids. Now that I think about it, sit, whoop, sit, um, have have it, you know, and they'll be like, "I know that dog. I know that dog." Yeah. So the the paparazzi don't follow him around oh, all the time. <laughs> we don't make a lot of money doing this either. <laughs> it's just it's just a lot of fun and a fun way to meet people. And um, yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. and the fame. I mean, and the fame. You know, think of all the hundreds of thousands of kids who've seen him on the covers of these books i mean yeah. that's kind of incredible have you have you stopped to think about that i know well i was in target one day and i saw the book and i was very excited <laughs> yes yeah, so was i <laughs> it was very exciting that was very well, exciting it's i did do a go ahead i'm sorry no go ahead i was just going to say i did do a school visit this winter in your area without knowing it and so I was able to tell tell the, the kids at the um, elementary school, hey, you know, he lives in this area. So if you're out at the park or if you're out in the street, you might see him. Yeah, yeah. He, he's just a good boy. He's just I just can't stop looking at him. He's just got the most expressive eyes. My editor, Susan, said that was the thing that she really was drawn to was his personality, that he really, you can just tell from his face how friendly he is. It's kind of neat because there's, you know, not all dogs get along with other dogs, but 
Deke gets along with everybody. It's just because I do do believe because of his soft eyes. Um, he just they just love him and they play with him and it's very cool. It's very well. He also looks like he's smiling when he opens his mouth. Look yeah. at him <laughs> like right, right now. He's Look at that face. Happy. He's very happy. He's a very good boy. Very well, good boy. I'm so excited to finally get the chance yeah. to meet you. Well, and I have, I have a question for you. What's that, Victoria? How did you pick a Jack Russell Terrier? Because oh, you know that's another question I get asked a lot. Um, because, you know, my real dog, Kipper, who's no longer with us, you know, gave me the idea to write about a dog who didn't understand when his family was moving, and he was not a Jack Russell Terrier, not, absolutely not. Um, but, you know, the reason I chose a Jack Russell is because I always thought that if I were a dog, that is the kind of dog that I would be. And when, when you describe Deke's personality, I really felt like you were describing me <laughs> because that's really how I see myself. Yeah, yeah, they're great but dogs. And so you, he's, you must be a great person then. <laughs> oh, well, I don't know about that, but I do have a lot of energy and everyone who's here who knows me will, will probably be nodding their heads. But um, I just wish that we could spend the entire night just staring at his adorable face. Um, but but we do have some other things that we want to do to celebrate yes. this book. But I want to thank you so much, Mary, for coming on with Deke. This has been such a treat. I mean, I just don't know any other cover model who has ever been at the launch of, of a book. I know. We're so happy we could, we could be here. It's just been a lot of fun. So. And what a treat for readers. I mean, if we had been doing this event the old-fashioned way in a bookstore, that would have been great too, but we, we wouldn't have been able to see Deke because we're in Boston and you are right. in Illinois. Right. That's what technology is so good for. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Mary. Thank you I'm so gonna, much. I'm going to, yes, thank I'm going to so move much. on. But, you. Yes. yes. Thank you so much, and we will see, hopefully we'll see you again, or I'll be in touch. Yes, bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Everybody stay on, because I'm still here. <laughs> you ready? Everybody, I am still here. Okay. Um, guess what we're going to do now? That was really fun, wasn't it? Um, we are going to play a game. Everybody who's been at any of my launches know that I like to give away prizes. And so I have a game that was inspired by, by my very good friend, Bridget Hodder, who is here, who's a very, very talented author of The Rat Prince. Um, we're going to play a game where I am going to read a very small passage from the, yes, it's you, Bridget. I'm going to read a very small passage from the book, and I'm not going to read the next line. I'm going to ask you to guess what it is, and I'm going to have four choices up on the screen with a letter. They'll be lettered A, B, C, all the way through, you'll see. And the first person to correctly guess the next line by putting that letter into the chat will win a $15 gift card to Belmont Books that you can use online. So it doesn't matter if you live in the Boston area or not. We're gonna have three chances to win. So if you're ready, I'm going to get started. Now on this book, it doesn't matter if you've read the book or not, um, Fenway and Hattie go on a camping trip as you saw in the trailer. And there are a lot of other dogs there and a lot of other humans and not all of them are nice. So all of the passages that I'm going to read are about Fenway meeting other dogs. Are you ready? Okay, the first passage I'm going to read is when Fenway meets Coco. A small dog gives me a once over, then wanders up to smell my bum. After the quickest sniff ever, she turns away before I can return the greeting. What's up with that? Could she possibly make up her mind about me that fast? I check her out as best I can. Smells like a Pomeranian. She's almost my size, but her fur is tan colored and it's so puffed out, she's practically round. Fenway, huh? She says cautiously, her black eyes and nose popping out from all that fur. I don't remember you from last year or any other year. I drop onto my forepaws. Now, what is the next line? Can we show the, um, the four choices? 
A, newsflash, I'm here now. B, well, that's awfully embarrassing. C, okay, I'll just leave now. Or D, <laughs> you seriously forgot me? What in the world is wrong with you? I'll give you guys a few seconds, but it seems like we have a lot of answers already. You all know Fenway too well. All right, Kaylee, we're gonna move on to the next one, okay? I think you guys are very, very sharp. Okay, so this, is, this passage is where Lucky is introducing Fenway to some other dogs. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, he says, slobbering all over me. He tells me his name is Lucky. He smells like he's itching to play. I move on to give the dachshund a friendly sniff before reaching up to smell the German Shepherd and the huge black poodle. They're both way bigger than the rest of us, even Goldie. Lucky nods towards each of the other dogs, telling me their names are Chorizo, Titan, and Midnight. Dude, I say, turning to the dachshund, your name is Chorizo? Now, let's guess the next line. Is the next line E, I love chorizo. F, I'm a big fan of the tofu chorizo at Trader Joe's. G, ha ha, are you loaded with spices? Or H, I had a dream about chorizo once. I went to bite it and it turned into a green bean. Okay, I'll give you guys a few seconds because it sounds like a lot of you know the answer to this one. <laughs> if you know Fenway, I think you know a lot about him and what he likes and what he doesn't like. All right, has everyone had a chance to guess? Okay, let's move on to the last one. This is where Fenway meets a couple of dogs at the water dish. The Boston Terrier just stares. So does the Border Collie. Have they never seen such a handsome Jack Russell before? The Boston cocks her head. You're not that dog Fenway, are you? I stand a little taller, my tail high and waving. I sure am. Have you girls heard of me? The Boston looks at the Border Collie who's already slinking away. Um, sort of, she mutters. Next thing I know, she's skulking off too. I turn to the ladies. Nobody likes me. What is the next line? Is it I? Do I smell flowery or something? J, well, I guess I can't blame them. I am pretty unlikable. K, tell me the truth. Am I annoying? Or I, I can't see the last one. I think it's JK. L. <laughs> Maybe I'll go eat worms. <laughs> okay, everybody guess the correct answer and the first person will get a $15 gift card to Belmont Books. Awesome. I think everybody's had a chance to answer. So that's what I had planned for you all for the contest. And now, as Kaylee said at the beginning, I would like to answer some of your questions because I know this chat, I wasn't reading it because I was, I was busy, <laughs> but I saw it kind of like exploding like popcorn. So um, Kaylee, do you have a bunch of questions to ask? Yes, I do. Thank you so much, Victoria. Um, actually, we had meant to set this up so that people would only be able to comment to me, um, but the chat did end up being just open to everybody. So I apologize for the mix up, um, but thank you for everybody for being so respectful and for making such great comments. Um, we did get some really great questions. So, um, I'm, and I'm sorry that I won't have a chance to ask all of the questions because we did get so many really good ones. Um, so the first one is um, when you were writing this book, were you picturing Deke, the actor? Um, that is a great question. And do you know what? When I'm writing any of the Fenway and Hattie books, I am not picturing Fenway, let alone Deke. Do you know why? Um, 
because I'm him. So the books are all written in the first person. So I'm actually in my imagination, and we do this at school visits, I, am, I become that Jack Russell Terrier. So I'm really chasing the bad guys and I'm really trying to scare away the intruders and all of that. So I'm actually in his head. So I don't see, and I've never met Deke before. So um, yeah, so that's the really true answer. Wow, that's so interesting. <laughs> <laughs> well, it sounds like you are really an expert on dogs. Um, another person asked, have you ever considered writing about rodents? Well, not squirrels, if that's, if that's <laughs> what the, the reader is asking. I've never thought about writing about a squirrel or a chipmunk, but I would not rule out a mouse. Oh, all right. Um, Several people asked, what did you do with the s'mores that you made? Oh my God, I ate them. No, <laughs> we did. So <laughs> actually at the book, well, when Ellie and I made them on our show, I ate them. <laughs> I, ate, I ate them. Um, but it, at the bookstore, um, this is something I really was excited about. I bought um, cupcake wrappers and we put them all in there so we could hand them to people because they were so, turns out that fluff is really, really sticky. Mm. So there we were handing out all of these little, um, and then of course I got all the leftovers. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> um, let's see, there's so many good questions here. Um, what was the most fun part of Fenway and Hattie in the Wild for you to write? Oh my gosh, you know, this, this whole book was really, really fun. Um, there's... A, once again, I don't want to give any spoilers here, but a lot of things go wrong. When, <laughs> turns out that when dogs go camping, a lot of things can go wrong. So it was really, really fun for me to sort of like um, think of all the things that could go wrong. Um, and then of course, to write them, it was a lot of fun. And also there's so many new characters in the story because both Fenway and Hattie are part of a group where they're meeting uh, people and dogs for the first time. So it was really, really fun to, to uh, create and explore a lot of different personalities. That was fun too. Well, this question is just for me, but I just can't resist asking, have you ever thought about doing a spinoff book about one of the other characters? Um, well, no. <laughs> but if I did, it would be really hard, to, like I said, to do a squirrel. So it would have to be one of the other dogs. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> That's great. Um, a lot of people were asking about camping. Um, one person said, how did you come up with the idea of camping? And another person said, do you like to go camping a lot? Um, and is there any, are there any specific things that happen in this book that are from your own camping? Experience? Oh, I bet my husband asked this question. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let me, let me try to answer all of those questions. Um, I thought, I had always thought about camping as a possibility for Fenway because when coming up with ideas for the stories, I have to think about things that are believable for a dog to do. And there are a lot of places where dogs are not, I'm sorry to say, dogs are not allowed a lot of places. Um, but camping was something that I thought could be a lot of, there could be a lot of possibilities because they could be outside. And of course, there are lots of things outside for dogs to explore. Um, so that was always on my mind. Um, in conversation with my editor, um, Susan Kohan, and, um, and my agent as well, um, we thought about the idea of doing the fourth book where Fenway and Hetty go somewhere, um, somewhere different than, than just their new house. And so right away, I thought of the camping. And then, of course, um, my real family likes to go camping. I have gone camping with my real family a few times and I have had fun for the record. Those of you who are probably saying that I didn't have fun, I did. But we did bring a, along our, a, a, the aforementioned dog Kipper, um, who sadly is no longer with us. Um, I went on one trip with Kipper and the family and let's just say Kipper was not a good camper. So a lot of the things that happened um, really happened. Um, but the thing that I'm sure that it was my husband who was asking about, I'm going to talk to you later. I know you asked this question. Um, we are big kayakers. And so there was a time where all of us went kayaking on a river and we tried to bring Kipper um, and the double kayak. <laughs> it didn't work out very well because <laughs> Kipper, you know, freaked. And that, if, as if that wasn't bad enough, 
he turned over the double kayak and all of our gear sunk to the bottom of the river and he swam to the shore and ran away into the woods. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. Yeah, so Kipper has not been on a boat ever since. <laughs> That's great. Something um, like that sort of happens in this book. Um, here's a good question. If you are Fenway, are the other dogs your friends? Well, they're all figments of my imagination. Um, and um, they're not, you know, based on real people or anything like that. Um, when I think about new dogs and new dog characters in particular, I try to think about um, contrasts. Like Goldie and Patches, who are um, Fenway's friends, they're opposite from each other. And they also, um, they're very different from Fenway because they're kind of older and wiser. And so that's a nice contrast too. And so when I came up with all the other dogs, I'm always thinking about that. And I also like to pick breeds um, that aren't what you expect. Like Goldie is a golden retriever, but she's very grumpy. And Coco, who is a Pomeranian, she's like the bully in this book. So I try and, as much as I can, I try to think of, of um, dog characters who would be interesting and funny, um, but it's all about Fenway, right? So um, it's all got to be to showcase Fenway. There are some dogs in this book who are actually real dogs. Um, one of them is Hugo. He is the, uh, the real dog of Liv and Charlotte Finleggi, um, to whom this book is dedicated and who made the trailer. Um, and what else? I named um, the Boston Terrier is inspired by my very good friend Lidja's dog, Vera, who sadly is no longer with us. Um, but I think that's about it. Um, and I know many people are wondering about this since we're in Boston and because of the dog's name, will Fenway ever visit Fenway? So Fenway um, does not visit Fenway, um, but in this book, which some of the readers here probably have read, um, Hattie has the chance to go to Fenway Park and Fenway doesn't really understand that. Um, of course, how, why would he? Fenway, his name, park, he goes to the park. Um, so that's as close as I've gotten. Great. Um, so I'm just gonna ask one more question because um, we don't wanna take up your whole night, um, but since we do have quite a lot of participants on here, um, probably some people might not have read the books before. They might be interested, but they're not sure. Do you have to start with the first book? Can you just jump right in with Fenway and Hattie in the Wild? Yes, that is a great question. You do not have to read the books in order. All of the books are standalone stories. The only thing um, that starts at, with book one and goes through book four is that um, in book one, they move to a new house. And so book two and book three take place soon after they've moved to a new house. And then book four is the end of the summer and Hattie's getting ready to go to school and they go on this camping trip as a tradition to meet everybody. Um, so those are the only things, but they're, each one of those things is explained in each particular book. So I, you don't have to read them in order. Um, if you haven't read any of the books, you definitely can start with this one. It's a whole lot of fun, and especially because summer is right around the corner. I really would recommend this for lots of summer um, hijinks <laughs> <laughs> and s'mores. <laughs> that sounds terrific. <laughs> and is the recipe in the book? For the s'mores bars? No, but it's on our YouTube channel. So um, as I mentioned, Ellie Swartz. Hi, Ellie. Um, Ellie and I have this YouTube series called Books in the Kitchen. It's youtube.com slash books in the kitchen. You can also get there from my website or Ellie's web website. And uh, we do have the recipe and they're no bake s'mores bars. Oh. So you can make them at home very easily. Okay. Well, that was wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, thank you for everybody for attending, but especially to Victoria J. Co., to Mary Pankinen and Deke. Um, and don't forget everybody, if you order Fenway and Hattie in the wild on belmontbooks.com by Thursday, you can get those lovely postcards. Um, and it'll be, it'll come right in the mail to you, right? Yep. I'm going to, I got some postcard stamps and I'm going to mail them right to each person. So what a special thing. And you could even use them as bookmarks if you want. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much. Um, well, so I'm going to hang on. Can I say thank you to you, Kaylee, because you did an amazing job. And oh, I really, honestly, I've never done anything like this before. And if it weren't for Belmont Books, 
I would not have even attempted it. So thank you. Oh, thank you. All right, so I'm gonna hang on in the line and if anybody has any questions or you know needs anything, um, I'll be in the chat. Um, but otherwise, thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for coming. Bye-bye.